Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you're new, and we are gonna do some fun projects around the house today. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make some candles. I've done this once years and years ago, and we are going to try our hand at it again. So that's the first thing we're gonna do, and while they set up, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some dinner tonight. We're gonna make some enchiladas. I went shopping downstairs in the my own personal grocery store and i got a bunch of canned goods out this is all stuff that i've preserved up over the last year we have canned turkey homemade enchilada sauce that we canned together canned pinto beans i went in my freezer and i got some tortillas out i went ahead and i made up some rice using some of our tomato juice um, from the salsa we made if you watched my video on how we make salsa, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then in here, I added some of the garden fresh onions that I had diced in the freezer so I didn't have to dice any onions and the diced peppers from the garden. So I threw that all in here and I had this cook so that the veggies could just cook right in here. I also grabbed out some corn. So we will get going on the enchiladas as soon as we get the corn. Well, <laughs> as soon as we get the candles made, and I'm actually going to make some breakfast casserole too from a bunch of goodies we have that we've preserved up as well. So I got all of the supplies to make this on Amazon, and I can link it down below if this is some project you're interested in trying. My goal for these is it for to have candles for myself, but I also thought it would be fun to make some Christmas gifts. So this is soy wax we're gonna to use today. This is supposed to burn cleaner and burn longer than paraffin wax. The way we're gonna melt the wax is with a double boiler. So I'm gonna put this on to get really warm. This is just some water in a pan. And we're gonna use this little pot to melt the wax in. Once you melt wax in something, then that thing is basically ruined. And when I purchased this, I thought this canister was probably twice the size of it. It's a 32 ounce canister. So when I link the products that you need if you wanna do this project, I'm gonna to try to find one that's twice the size because this is a lot littler than I was expecting. Unless we end up really liking it, but I think it would be nice to have one that's bigger. So what we're gonna do is just take our little wax beads and pour it into our canister. And we're gonna take this and put it on the stove to melt with this double boiler. We're gonna use the water and this pan to melt our wax. We're just using canning jars, pint canning jars. And what I bought for the wick, because I like the ambiance these types of wicks put off, I got these wood wicks. And the wood wicks came with these little metal stands but they did not come with the sticker you need to stick this onto the bottom of the jar so this is just a double-sided sticky pad that you put on the end of your silver pad and then we're going to put this directly in the middle of our pint jar if we can just like that so now we have a wick in our jar and we're going to repeat that process nine times until we have wicks on all of our jars. We are going to use essential oils to scent our candles. I did look up, because of your recommendations when I talked about this project that I wanted to do, is there are some essential oils that can be toxic when you are burning them. And the essential oils we're gonna be using today are mint, eucalyptus, sweet orange, and cinnamon. And all four of those essential oils are non-toxic. I know that some people have very strong feelings about where they purchase their essential oils. There are those companies you can buy the little bottles from. There's two main companies. And I just went on Amazon and I purchased four ounce bottles because these were way more affordable than purchasing the little bottles from a few of those really big essential oil companies. And because we are burning these and we are not you know, ingesting them, putting them on our skin or anything like that. I just, it says they're 100% pure. I did read to make sure that there's no 
other oils in there. And so we're just gonna go with that today. You could use whatever you want to make your candle. I think what would be really fun would be to go to a thrift store and pick up some different containers like really pretty teacups or just random different containers that you could find at th a thrift store. I just happen to have a lot of canning jars and I do purchase most of my canning jars at the thrift store. And for my area, a canning jar is 39, no, 49 cents. So that's a very affordable way for me to have a container to make a candle out of because a lot of these are going to turn into gifts. Look at our wax. It's starting to melt down a little bit. So as it's melting down, I'm going to add a little bit more wax to here. I'm gonna try not to get in, into my nice pot. So now what I'm going to do is separate my jars and I have two straws out because so I'm going to use these straws to mix in our essential oils and I wanted to keep the scent separate so our mint eucalyptus is going to be green and our orange cinnamon is going to be purple. So I'm just going to take my jar and I purchased ones that have little droppers and over here we're going to put one dropper full of orange in each of these four jars and I want it to be more orange forward than cinnamon forward so we're going to start with that we may need to add more and then we're going to do half a dropper of the cinnamon in each jar With the peppermint eucalyptus, we're going to do one in each jar and half of the eucalyptus. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to double the amount of essential oils I just added. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but that is the fun of experimenting and doing crafts is you have the freedom to do whatever you want and sometimes it's a win and sometimes it's not but the worst thing that's going to happen is we'll chalk it up to a learning experience and we'll do it different next time. Our wax is melting down again so I'm going to add some more of these beads to our canister. Once the water's hot and we have a good amount of melted wax in here, this process I think will go a lot faster. It's just a matter of getting it going the first time. Our wax has melted. So now I'm gonna take our wax and pour it into our jar. We have about this much wax left in here after filling one pint. So I'm gonna get this back on the stove and filled with wax so it can continue to melt. I think having some wax in there that's hot and melted will help this wax melt faster. And then we're gonna do something to this and we're gonna see if it needs any more essential oils or anything. I did have this thought that you might wanna put the essential oils in after you put some wax in because The essential oils could absorb in that little sticker thing I have at the bottom. So I want to mix this up and give it a good smell and see if we can smell enough essential oils in it. I think we need to add some more. I think we're going to, I'm not going to add more to all of them. I'm just going to add more to the one I just put the wax in. I'm going to do a whole nother dropper full of orange, maybe two. And a half a dropper full of the cinnamon, maybe a whole one. 
and now I'm going to take our little stir stick and we'll stir that around. And now we're going to smell it again. Oh yeah, that was it. I think if you're going to do this, skip putting the essential oils in before you put the wax in, put the wax in and then put the essential oils in. So what I did, I need to remember that for myself. I did two more full of the orange and a full one of the cinnamon. So I'll probably do that same amount extra. Well, the peppermint and eucalyptus is a lot stronger. We'll have to just test that one and see how much we end up doing to that one as well. This is gonna be quite the process to get all that wax melted in, in a timely manner. So instead of getting all these candles done now before we start on dinner, we're gonna go ahead and get started on dinner so we're not wasting our time in the kitchen. Almost everything for dinner was from the pantry, canned goods and things, but we do need a few ingredients for our breakfast casserole. We need some cottage cheese. Oh, we do need to shred some cheese for our enchiladas and for the breakfast casserole. So we need two different types of cheese, Swiss cheese and cheddar cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and add a zucchini to the breakfast casserole, so I'm gonna get that out. Maybe we'll add our winter squash too, because those need to get eaten after we wash them. Eggs. Eggs are becoming a prized commodity around here. It's getting colder, my chickens are getting older, and it's darker outside, so I'm only getting two eggs a day, which I was getting nine eggs a day. Oh, and then we need some of our pre-cooked sausage that we made the other day. We got our zucchinis washed up. I'm gonna make the breakfast casserole first. So I just preheated the oven to 400 degrees. This is so that Josh and I can have a breakfast for the rest of the week and I don't have to worry about cooking breakfast. I am basing this off my Amish breakfast casserole recipe, but I am adapting it a little bit. The recipe calls for peppers, and instead of peppers, we're gonna use zucchini because these need to be used up, and you can kind of throw whatever you have in it. So we're just gonna get these diced up. And we're gonna add Swiss cheese to our breakfast casserole. So we need to get this shredded up. And then we need cheddar cheese for the enchiladas and we'll get this shredded up as well. I'm gonna go ahead and shred the rest of this whole block because we are gonna be making two enchiladas, one for dinner tonight and one to throw in the freezer. I don't know if I'm gonna get a huge big batch freezer meal cooking before postpartum and I wanna make sure that I'm slowly stocking my, my freezer with meals if I don't end up getting to one of those big cooking days. So a good way to do it, if you don't even have time to take a day or half a day to cook a bunch of meals, when you're already cooking dinner, cook twice as much, you already have the kitchen dirty, and you can slowly fill your freezer that way. You already know we've kind of already been starting to fill it, but I wanna make sure I have more meals. Now our wax has melted again, so let's go ahead and do one of the peppermint candles so we can see how we need to adjust the oils, the essential oils in the peppermint candle. Before I start smelling that and adjusting it, I'm gonna put this back on the stove with some more wax so we can continue to melt more wax. So I'm gonna take our purple straw this time and mix up the wax and the essential oils. Okay, so this definitely has a stronger scent right off the bat than the orange cinnamon did before adding extra. This still smells really good. So I think I'm gonna still add more. I don't think it needs quite as much as the orange. So I'm gonna do half a dropper full of the eucalyptus and a full of the peppermint. Now I'm gonna stir that together. 
and we're going to do the sniff test. Oh, <sighs> clears the sinuses. Mm, that is one of my favorite. Both of these orange cinnamon and peppermint eucalyptus, I just love. And the cool thing about those four essential oils is they are some of the most affordable essential oils. And a bunch of this is going to be Christmas gifts. Awesome. So let's keep going on our breakfast casserole. It's going to take a while to get all of these jars filled up with wax. So definitely my recommendation would be to get a bigger pot if you're going to be making a bunch of candles to melt your wax in. And that is a lot of cheese. Awesome. So we're going to make our breakfast casserole directly in the casserole dish. So we have one less dish to clean. So I have some pre-diced potatoes. I'm going to add two bags of potatoes in here, or maybe one and a half. I think we'll do one and a half. And then we're going to add our zucchini. So I take that back. <laughs> I'm going to add one bag of potatoes because I want to be able to add a bunch of zucchini and it won't all fit if I add the, all the potatoes and the zucchini. We're going to tie this up, put this back in the freezer. I want to make sure we use that zucchini because it really needs to be used up. Now I'm going to add some cottage cheese. our Swiss cheese. This breakfast casserole is not like my baked oatmeal where I can mix it all in the pan. So we are going to have to transfer this into a mixing bowl, which we can rinse this out and reuse this mixing bowl for our enchiladas. So I will get two uses out of it. We're gonna add some black pepper, garlic salt, sausage that we pre-cooked the other day together. So I love having pre-cooked sausage in the freezer because you can just pull it out and put it into a dish and makes it so easy. And now we're gonna add about six eggs. Now all we have to do is mix this together. I'm gonna to top it with just a little bit more Swiss cheese. And into the oven it goes. I just rinsed out our bowl because we're going to make our enchiladas in the same bowl and I can put the breakfast things away. While I was making the breakfast casserole, I took a break and I filled out one more candle and I actually realized that one of these jars is like a leftover pickle jar or I don't know, it's some sort of leftover jar. So to make this even more economical, you could save different jars, you know, glass jars that you get different things in and make candles out of those. Anything that would, you know, be glass. These are more gonna be like wet burritos because I'm putting rice in them. And when I cook this rice, like I said, I cooked it with that, oh, that's hot, <laughs> with that tomato juice that has all that good flavor. And then I just added my peppers and onions right into the Instant Pot so I didn't have to cook anything on the stove because we're gonna use some convenience items to make these enchiladas. And some of those convenience items are pre-cooked turkey. You could use chicken. You could cook this up right before you put it in the enchiladas, but I'm gonna use can to make this so easy. And then here I have some corn that we preserved up this year that I bought from a local farmer and we are going to use this as well. I am kind of making this up as we go along. I'm just adding things that I think are delicious. We may even get three pans of enchiladas out of this. So we're gonna add the corn, our rice, 
with our pepper, peppers and onions mixture. I was gonna add some beans to this, but I think we're gonna have enough filling with just this amount. Now we're gonna open our jars of turkey. Beautiful pop on that. And we're gonna strain the broth out. This is perfect that we are using turkey and we're straining some of the broth out because this, in two days, I'm going to, I don't wanna hurt my knife, my mom's house and we're gonna start prepping for Thanksgiving dinner. We're celebrating Thanksgiving early at my family's house. So I'm gonna bring this turkey broth and we're gonna make gravy or stuffing or something like that out of it. Beautiful pop, do you hear that? I can link my canning lids down below. I love these canning lids, they're perfect. When I stuff my chicken into my jars, I keep the pieces really big so that I can kind of decide how big I want them in the final product. So I'm just gonna take my knife and run it through that two times just so that the pieces can be a little bit smaller, but I don't want them completely shredded. I'm gonna check on our wax. Let me wash my hands real quick. I'm gonna put these jars in the dishwasher because I unloaded the dishwasher. And then we are going to fill up another one of our candles. So far, we have made four candles. And I think we're making good progress. I just have to make sure I keep the different candles separate. When I say that, I mean the scents separate. So right now I'm going to be making another one of the mint eucalyptus. Wish you could smell this, it smells so good. I could almost fill two of these jars with this container of wax, but it wouldn't be quite full. And because I'm adding more essential oils to it, I don't want to fill it only halfway and then add more wax to it later. So we're gonna get this back on the stove with more wax in it. We have used almost this entire five pound bag. So, so it almost takes an entire pound of wax to fill one of those pint jars. I have one more bag, I'm gonna go get one more bag. But yeah, I'm gonna do that now. So that's good to know that it takes just about a pound of wax to fill one pint up. When we're done, I will do rough math on how much each one of these candles costs to make. Now let's get our enchilada. Oh no! This is a little unfortunate. I don't want to sweep this up into my dustpan because my dustpan's gross. This might have to be, I don't know, I hope I don't have to throw this away, but this could be too dirty to put into a candle. It wouldn't be a project in my kitchen if we didn't have at least one disaster. Oh, you know what would work well to pick this up? It's my bench scraper. There's a bobby pin. Darn it. Oh well. Now that we've cleaned up that disaster, we can finish seasoning our enchiladas. I just sprinkled in some pepper. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in some garlic salt. I did not season the rice, so this is a lot of filling mixture. The chicken does have, or turkey has some salt already in it. I guess I could leave those out. I'm going to add some of our freeze dried cilantro. Oh, by the way, the month of November, the freeze dryers are $500 off right now. So if you've thought about getting a freeze dryer, Right now is the time. They don't go on sale. This is the first sale I think I've ever seen on the freeze dryers. So I will put that link down below if you're interested in that. We're gonna add some cumin. The freeze dried cilantro is 
so good. It's way better than dehydrated cilantro. And now here's some coriander we're gonna add. Now, I think I might be out of coriander. I'm gonna have to go downstairs and check, but I'm going shopping with my mom. We're gonna go do a bunch of Thanksgiving prep shopping. And we usually stop into Penzi's, our favorite spice store. I usually buy my spices at Azure, but maybe once or twice a year, I go to Penzi's with my mom and I buy some delicious spices. This is just some smoked paprika. I would add to this some of our freeze-dried hot pepper flakes, but some of the peppers I put in here are pretty warm from the garden. I made that mistake. I put a ton of them on pizza the other day, and it was, Josh could eat the pizza, but it was borderline whether he could or not, and so I don't wanna add any more spice to this than what the peppers already have in here. So we're gonna stir this up, we're gonna get all the chicken, rice, peppers, onions, corn, all mixed together. Let's check on our, our wax is still melting. your own corn before buying it from a local farmer I didn't grow this corn I just bought it from a local farmer blanched it cut it off the cob froze it it is so good it is so much better than it's worth the effort than buying store-bought corn because the flavor is just it's you can't even compare the two now I'm probably gonna run out of this corn and then I'll have to buy frozen corn and that's fine too but it is so good. That's why I do what I do. Support local farmers and have the best tasting produce available. Mm -hmm. I think that's perfect. I think we can make one more candle and then we can start rolling out oh, where's my, our enchiladas. That stuff is so good. Something like this, you don't necessarily need a recipe. Just throw stuff together, ingredients you like, and go from there. Oh gosh, I wanna keep these. All right, I'm gonna go get this apron and this in the wash. I may have just ruined <laughs> this apron and my half zip because we just got clove or cinnamon oil all over it. <laughs> Sticky fingers today. Outfit change. I grabbed some dishcloths while I was in the laundry room. I normally don't put cheese in my filling mixture. I just put it on the top. I can't tell a difference when I put it in or put it on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and just put it on the top. So here's some of our home canned enchilada sauce. This stuff is phenomenal. I'm gonna pour half of each so I am someone who does like to get my burrito wrappers dipped in the enchilada sauce. So that's another reason why it helps if you're doing two pans at a time, because I can use one pan as kind of like my sauce pan to dip my enchilada tortillas in. These are more like wet burritos. I should probably call them wet burritos, not enchiladas. Enchiladas usually just have meat and cheese, and they're usually corn tortillas. Oh my goodness, this enchilada sauce smells incredible. So now we fill our burrito wrapper. Oop. Tuck the sides in. We roll it up. So that was the perfect amount of filling for two pans and two packages of the tortillas. So I am gonna open one more jar of enchilada sauce and pour it over both these pans. We're gonna divide it evenly. I can definitely tell you wanna shake 
the enchilada sauce nicely before you use it. I love when we use up a bunch of jars. I think we probably used six jars today because that means all the effort that I put into putting the food in the jars was worth it because it is definitely a cycle, a cyclical thing of filling your jars, canning your jars, filling your freezer, and then emptying it again, making sure you go through it. I definitely am not someone who wants to keep my canned goods just sitting nicely and beautiful on my pantry shelf. I want to be using them because that means my effort was worth it. If they're just sitting there not being used, to me, that's like a waste of time. So now I'm going to cover both of these casserole dishes with a good amount of cheddar cheese. That's my favorite part where the cheese and the enchilada sauce and the tortilla get all crispy and crunchy and I think our breakfast should be ready to be taken out of the oven. I can smell it. Surprisingly I can smell what's in the oven over that cinnamon that I spilled. All right, let's check on the... Oh my goodness. Oh, it looks so good. It is perfectly cooked and browned and bubbly. Do you see how brown and crusty that is? Oh. So the Amish casserole that I made, that breakfast casserole, it's definitely based loosely on that recipe. The actual recipe itself uses bacon instead of sausage, and instead of zucchini, it's peppers and onions. But you can kind of do whatever you want. Now we are ready to make one more candle. I just put dinner in the oven. Oh my goodness, the sunset out there is beautiful tonight. We only have one more candle after this one to make. Oh, I just spilled a bunch of wax on my parchment paper. Now I did put these jars on a light cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, and I'm really glad I did that because I just spilled a little bit of wax. So I'm gonna put more peppermint oil and more eucalyptus oil. And something interesting that's happening on the orange cinnamon ones, let me bring you in and show you, is they kind of created a hole next to the wick. So I just filled more plain wax in there and it kind of bubbled down. So now we're gonna have a nice level surface. And you can see on this one, there's a little bit of a hole there too. So I'm gonna take some more plain wax and just kind of fill that just like that. You can see it even better on this one right here. There's a big crack. I don't know what's causing that, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of wax. You see the air bubble that came up? And try to fill that in. What I'm gonna do with this enchilada, I'm gonna wrap it in two layers of foil, write what it is on it, put the date on it and stick it in the freezer. Now that we have the enchiladas in the freezer, I'm gonna go ahead and get the potatoes packaged up. I will eat this for breakfast as well, not just Josh. off. I'm not a sports fan, but what do, what do you say? I'm batting a thousand or batting zero. I don't know. Today is just one of those days. I can't seem to keep things in my hands. Now when I cook this, I did not want to overcook it to where the eggs would be completely dried out because I know they are going to be reheated and I don't want them to be super dry. They're definitely all the way cooked, but I do try to keep that in mind when I'm making things like this, just so that when you go to reheat it, you just can enjoy it just as much as if it was freshly cooked. So this made quite a bit. This will be enough breakfast for Josh and I to get through the week, which is awesome. 
really great. Now these are still very, very hot, so I'm not gonna put these in the refrigerator until they cool down quite a bit. I don't even, I'm not even gonna put the lids on until they cool down. I did decide to go ahead and not use that wax that I spilled on the ground because kind of yucky, which is pretty disappointing. But I won't make that mistake hopefully again. I guess I shouldn't, I shouldn't say I won't, but that is gonna be the goal. This is the last one going in and this one, hopefully I melted enough wax. Yeah, perfect. And then there's enough in there that I can top the rest of them off. This is the peppermint eucalyptus. Now they do make little scissors to cut the wicks a little bit shorter because my wicks are a little bit long, but I did not buy that. So my wicks are just gonna be a little bit long and that's okay. We will just live with that. I might attempt to cut them with scissors, but then they're gonna be at an angle. Just has to figure out how I want the presentation to look. But these are really, really cute. I'm gonna take the rest of my wax and kind of just top off each one. We got two, nine candles. So let me go ahead and do some math. I'm gonna tell you how much this project cost us. In each one of the essential oils, I probably only used a sixteenth of the bottle, so hardly any at all. Wait, so that'd be half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth. Yeah, probably a sixteenth of the bottle. So I'll be right back after I do a little bit of math. If I did my math correctly, the total price for all nine of those candles was $38.30. So divide that by nine, that is a total of $4.25 a candle, which is a fantastic price for a wood wick soy candle with essential oils, not fragrances. So how that breaks down is we used about $32.40 worth of wax. We used about $5, give or take, for the essential oils. We used 90 cents worth of the wooden wicks. And then I didn't calculate how much those little stickers cost because they were like, 200, for 240 stickers, the sticker that puts the wick on the ground, it was $7. So I guess I, I probably should have calculated that in too. So $7, I'm gonna round up by a penny. So 240 stickers. So they were 0 0.03 cents per sticker. So kind of, I just counted that as a wash. So not too bad. $4.25, give or take a few cents. I just realized I forgot to calculate the cost of the jar itself, which does have a cost. If you're buying it new, you're probably paying about a dollar or so a jar, but then you get a lid and a ring as well. These were most likely purchased used, which means they were 49 cents. So we're gonna add basically 50 cents to our $4.25. So these actually cost us around $4.75 but I still think that is a great price for a really nice candle. How productive was today, or this evening? This was just a few hours we spent in the kitchen. We got two meals done. I'm going to serve dinner with some sour cream and with some homemade hot sauce. And I do have some tomatoes in the refrigerator. I can dice up and we can top the enchiladas with tomatoes. So super, super easy dinner. And we have a whole nother meal in the freezer and we have breakfast taken care of for the rest of the week. I will show you what the enchiladas look like coming out of the oven. They probably have, yeah, they, they've got a while to go. So that was super fun. Like I said, if you are interested in any of these, well, I don't really have a rest. I have a recipe for my Amish casserole, but it is definitely not exactly what I made today. I don't have a recipe for, the enchiladas themselves, but I do, I can link where we made the enchilada sauce and that turned out so good. And then if you wanna make the candles, I'll leave all the ingredients down there for you to make the candles. I do wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate every single one of you. 
If you enjoyed this video, I can pop a couple of my other videos right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.